guys, we are on the Halberg Rassi 50. Absolutely fantastic boat. We're going to start on the outside. Um, there's customers on board and then eventually we'll go and have a look on the inside. We've got a fabulous interview with Magnus Rassi. bit differently today going to start at the bow normally I start at the transom you have a fully integrated bow sprit um, it's not bolt on like another a lot of the other boats and then glued it's actually integrated part of the molding generally you can have a point forward about here for a spinnaker there is another in deck furler for a Jenica or Code D, um, whatever you wish, and this one is set up with a hydraulic um, furler for your Genoa. Single barrel roller coming back to your Lumar winch. You can see the chain plate and where the furler is managed forward, the motor for the furler there, and there's your chain plate. And all the way down the bottom is your um, chain locker. And just aft, you have your electric feet controls. Look all the way aft. She's 50 foot and a true 50 foot with a plum bow. On the water line doesn't change too much. Bits will be coming forward for you aft. You have a very large locker just behind your anchor, windless locker, watertight bulkhead. There's plenty of room in here for fenders, spare sails, all your bits and pieces, and a couple of steps to actually take you down to make it easier. And it's ventilated. So you're not having to worry about condensation. You have two forward on the deck there are two opposite um, opening hatches so depending on where the wind's coming through in your anchorage you can get ample breeze coming through your cabin a bit of real estate for solar panels if you want this 50 is set up with full carbon infurling mast it's all Selden gear with a carbon boom and hydraulic vang all your halyards are uh, hydraulically adjusted. Running down the port side, you can see you have your Selden Genoa tracks. All your sheets and halyards run off. We'll go into the, the technical side by the helms in a minute. The one of Halberg Rassi's motto is everything is touch, finger control from the cockpit. Have integrated um, non-slip solar panels up here and you'll see when we go through and do the interview with Magnus that you have these lovely windows forward to both um, port and starboard open to allow the wind through and two more opening hatches up on the, the roof there inboard outboard shrouds so it makes walking all the way through very very easy and obviously being carbon you have solid stainless steel or solid rod rigging as with all hard work rassies you have your solid windscreen with opening window forward i love this i wish more boats would do this and obviously your spray hood uh, will come back further up if needed and you have a great bimini granny's bonnet there which one thing is quite nice for the way this folds as you can see it's all on tracks which is absolutely brilliant 
both port and starboard you have side access to get on into mooring and an easy step into your centre cockpit. I'm actually going to come aft now it's cleared. Hydraulic adjustable backstays and obviously your aft transom folds out down here to give you a really nice bathing platform. One thing that Halberg Rassi have done with the beam of this boat but this whole aft section, your master cabin is behind here, we'll look at that at the moment, but you've got the whole beam of this boat, well, there's an option, you can have some seats put in here if you want, and both sides, you have two very large storage compartments, both port and starboard. For toys, lines or fenders and an opening hatch, you'll see when we get back to the cabin, this actually opens up to give you more ventilation into that aft cabin. Main sheet is right after the boom, so once again you've got more downforce, better pressure, which means trimming the mainsail. You have more control and it's just better, um, better for performance and it's kept simple. You know, comes back to this winch, you can be sat at either helm and do all your adjusting from here. Starting on the starboard helm, as you know, uh, it's twin rudder, Jeffer steering. You have your Yamaha engine controls here. Start, stop, repeater, uh, electric switches for your anchor and so on, sail, anchor, and then up the top, bow and stern thruster, autopilot, Lumar um, chain counter, so you can do with your winch here, anchor up and down, horn, let me know in the comments below if you know what five blasts mean. And obviously this is very similar to the 400 we looked at the other day, but you have all your bits for your lights, deck lights. And once again, Raymarine, I love it. Um, let's see if this one's actually working. So you can have full charts, full radar. I actually quite like to navigate like this, so I have radar one side and my chart plotter on the other. Your boat, your configuration. Electronic throttle controls and you can have them on both helms if you wish so maneuvering you can do from either side to save you getting a divorce and then over here once again somebody's already set it up you have another Raymarine chart plotter autopilot um, your main sheet winch primary winches and over on this part of the pedestal Genoa main sail Vang, it's all um, cozy, it's all explanatory. The whole idea when you're sailing this boat, and I'll give you my view from the helm, so you can see everything you're going. The whole idea with Frassies is that you don't need to leave the helm position. You don't need to leave here at all, you don't need to go forward, you don't need to put yourself in any danger. Everything is touch button control and they do it brilliantly. Coming forward, it's a large enough cockpit for six, easily for dining. Your hydraulic controls for sorting out pressure for your van, um, well all your hydraulic systems are here and there is a small lazarette for you know bits and pieces you might want to keep up on deck you know usual with Rassi you have a nice storage area in the middle and if you flip the central area over there is somewhere to put your drinks and so on while you're underway I'll leave a link uh, last year we delivered a 42E catch. 
I'll leave a link up here if you want to have a look at that one and see how smooth it was going across the Bay of Biscay. Once again, you have attachment points here for your safety harness and there are some back by the helm. You will find them all over the boat. Talking to one of the guys the other day, there's 12 coats of varnish on the table and these areas here. And that's why it looks so solid and shiny. The craftsmen, artisans, I would call them, do a beautiful job with these boats. A couple of important drink holders or your repeaters here. So if you're sat here at night or during the day doing your watch, Raymarine chart plotter, you have all your repeaters, autopilot, compass you don't really have to go anywhere you don't have to go out in the weather it's it's set up and managed for comfort of sailing you know crossing the pacific the atlantic anywhere you want to go norwegian fjords you're going to do it comfortably and in style and know that your boat is going to look after you every step of the way. Washboards come up hydraulically, which is nice. You don't have to find somewhere to store them. And now we'll go down and five easy steps down. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. A pano of the saloon. Now we're down in this area. There are a couple of configurations you can do. Mr. Rag Mr. Rassi is over in the corner. You'll hear from him in a minute on the interview we did. Um, notice walking around this particular 50, it's fitted with a carbon rig. Is this standard or an option that you like to provide owners? Uh, standard is uh, in Moss Herning with electric motor in aluminium. And an option is an upgrade to carbon in Moss Herning. And we offer a kit which is not only carbon mast, but we think to get use of that you need a lot of a whole chain of things that you need to upgrade. So we have upgraded the mast to carbon, the boom to carbon, the spreaders to carbon, the outhole to push button uh, electrohydraulic uh, outhole. The same thing with the bang, with the uh, backstay tensioner. Even the hellier tension for the main and for the head sail is by push button electrohydraulic uh, operation. And there is, uh, for the first time on the Halgarasi, a mast jack. So you can hydraulically pump up the mast to get a really good tension yeah. in the rig. And you have upgraded the, the standing ring to rod rig, upgraded halyards and sheets as well. And that makes a really good package that makes a stiffer mast yeah. that is lighter, a couple of hundred kilos lighter up there on yeah. the right place. And that ma means less heel, more control, you carry the sails in pressure winds, you get a mast that pumps less, a boat that pitches less, a boat that rolls less, and all that is great for cruising sailing. Yeah. Most people would think that carbon mast is something for racing freaks. But for racing, I would say, the only thing that matters is speed and angle towards the wind. Yeah. The comfort with less pitch and with less rolling and the comfortable sail is really important to a cruising sailor. So yes. I would say you gain even more with a demanding cruising sailor than uh, with a racing sailor. Our own uh, system for that, that we, where we have every control push button operated and we even have the name push button sailing <laughs> as a registered trademark uh, for uh, Algarasi. Full length um, 50 foot. Yes. How does that radiate with the water length too? The water line is close to 50 foot as well. And when we say 40 foot is really the hull length, we don't include the bowsprit that is really a part of the hull yeah. as well. And this allows you obviously more beam for the boat, a larger beam. It's a contemporary design. Yeah. It's not only about waterline length and width, it's about the shape of the hull and get efficiency and control with the twin rudders that makes always at least one rudder blade into the water. So we always have full control while, while sailing. Yeah. And that's great, in particular for a cruising sailor. Yeah. The particular thing with the Hammerasi is that we have a combination of a deep cockpit, a high combing and full headroom in the galley. Normally all other boats I know about in this size rely on the headroom below the seating area in the cockpit. And that means you need to compromise. 
you need to put the cockpit higher than you really want you get a cockpit combing that is lower than you really want and to get the headroom that is okay you either need to accept a lower headroom or you need to accept steps in the floor level and all that is sold on a Hadrasu. You have a soul in one level throughout the boat, you have full headroom in the walkthrough and in the galley, and you have a deep cockpit and you have a high combing all at the same time. Inside one of my favourite areas you have two very large comfortable armchairs and an area for your wine or whiskey glasses over here. There is an option to have a bench seat here if you wish. For myself personally, for this size of boat, this would be how I would like to configure it. All the joinery, as you know, is done in-house by Rassi, which means that they can control all the quality, not have to worry about problems from outside shipyards. As you can see with the armchairs, we'll just do one. Um, the armchairs hinge, so as you can see, you have even more storage behind, storage underneath the seat too, so plenty of space for extra bits and pieces. Before we do the technical space and the master suite, we'll do the forward cabin. On the starboard side, there is a really nice large single, small double berth. If you wish, you can have this with a Pullman berth, which is great for the kids, I think. Lovely space, plenty of storage. You'll note as we go through here, all the cupboards are ventilated. So there is no problems with condensation and obviously mold and every cabin as you can see there's an opening hatch here you have um, your Gerard vent up here and obviously the air conditioning is running it's two really nice reading lights and a mains plug if you need it here for charging another little cupboard underneath for keeping you know bedtime reading and so on and behind the door, there's a very nice, large opening hanging locker. All the lights come on, you'll see the little switch up here. So if I hold the camera up, as soon as you close the door, the light goes off. It's a nice little touch. And just across on the port side, you have your guest ensuite. Freshwater electric flush toilet. So you're not having to worry about odors. Fresh water and salt water wash basin. Plenty of storage behind the mirrors. And then you have, which is no surprise on a 50, you have a very large separate shower with plexiglass doors to keep the, the water in the shower. And obviously um, services behind here, switching over for your tanks. Very nicely done. And if you need it, if it's not draining, you have a touch switch for draining there. Very, very nice. Opening hatch, there's a Durard up there. So you're not having to worry about condensation. And then forward into the VIP cabin or your friend's cabin digital controls for your air conditioning some nice solid light switches there we'll put those and see how we're doing that's for the under lighting so you have a very large double island berth forward there is storage before we go too far forward you have access a fuse and 24 volt battery system large fiddles once again you'll hear me talk about the fiddles a lot around this boat as we all know it's important and a lot of manufacturers neglect to do proper fiddles but it's you know 
what can I say? So there is um, storage up there. You have access to storage here. Very nice port light windows, both port and starboard. Ventilated hanging locker here. If you notice, at the back of these lockers and all the storage, they're using the, the full depth, the full beam of the boat. I mean, my arm, I'm, I'm in the locker, so we're pretty much almost up to the deck. There's space in between, um, but no space has been wasted. They've thought a lot about these boats. They have years of experience of building them. So up ahead you have one, two, three, four, five, six overhead storage lockers and two very large hanging lockers. Those, when we were up on deck, those are those two um, opposite opening hatches. There's a fabulous breeze coming through here. Very, very nice. Right, coming barge table four eight people for dining um, if you had another puff you might be able to get 10 people around this table behind if i'm repeating myself let me know in the comments below but you have your hydraulics so your television can come up and down which is really really nice and then come over to one of my favorite parts is the nav desk you have enough space for two at the navigation station it's a proper um, nav desk just up at the back. Obviously, there's a small library area. There we go, it's your Reed's Almanac. Your master um, switch panel is here. So self-explanatory really, and you can see for your water and your fuel, um, bilge pumps, lights, VHF all that everything's marked nicely with cable ties in the middle in the middle there's a number index so if you have any issues when testing for the electrics you have your number index here and then you can then look it up in your manual to see where the problem is and what you have to do to fix it very simple very easy um, it's all about an easy life sailing making your life if you're cruising around the world you want an easy life it's as simple as that. You can see you have a Raymarine chart plotter, um, basically a repeater down here. They obviously have a camera somewhere, or that's a, a photograph, and your master vault systems here. I should imagine there's, if you want to configure it slightly different, um, the guys at Halberg Rassi would listen to your demands. And space for proper paper charts and underneath here you have usb um, charging plugs 230 volt plug and a 12 volt plug underneath the um, nav desk you have more storage for basically another library or anything you want to put in there somewhere for your books um, cruising guides um, you know if you're cruising around the world if you're like me then you probably have 30 or 40 different books telling you where to go. Something I'd like to point out is, as we're doing the walk around now, is the amount of light that's actually coming through. And you can see the blinds are down, covering most of the windows, and yet it's still really light here. None of the overhead lights are on. Some of the under lighting's on, but with light oak, full beam, lots of windows it's, it's just absolutely beautiful they're doing a nocturnal tonight at the boat show so we'll come around and you can see what it's like at night and obviously you have all these lower port lights too that have privacy blinds if you need them overhead lockers two three and over here and going into the galley just by the companionway, which is really, really handy, you have a wet weather gear locker, ventilated, once again, so you don't have to worry about condensation. It's in the perfect place by the companionway, so you can just store your wet weather gear, grab it as you need it, and go out. 
This is one level living. We alliterated it on the 400. I will tell you again here, it is really nice not to have to trip over anything. Coming down on the port side for your inline galley, once again you have huge fiddles over your worktop and on the companionway there are grab handles going all the way up. Very, very easy. Twin stainless steel, um, fresh water taps, great storage up above and for whoever's up on deck on watch you have a really nice opening hatch for passing out a cup of tea there's plenty of storage on this one we have a four top induction gimbaled stove with oven large fridge top loading fridge and over here and I should imagine you can configure it if you want to have one fridge one freezer as we can with most nowadays and something that's very important have an inbuilt extraction hob up top loading fridge space so when provisioning you have plenty of um, areas to keep your food cool nothing going off loads of space underneath the sink once again you know you can access your pipe work really easily not having to wash you can access your pipe work really easily for ease of maintenance and up over here once again a, another top loading fridge cool box Something we showed you on the 400, something that have always been on the Rassies, they've had this lovely pull out chopping board and it helps extend your work surface space. And obviously self-closing drawers and cupboards. Plenty of storage everywhere and down in this one, on the inside you have a dishwasher which is becoming more and more frequent on sailboats once again i think it's a great idea we showed you on the other one something i think is lovely and not a lot of yacht manufacturers are doing anymore is space for your crockery to stop it smashing around when you're on passage is depending obviously on the size of your plates and your bowls you can pull out a peg, put it in, lock everything into place and then you're not having to worry about breakages. Vented cupboards, again everything's vented so you're not having to worry about condensation. Taking full advantage of the full beam of this boat, this master cabin is I think absolutely fantastically luxurious and it goes all the way aft. Those are those, when we were on the rear, those are those rear windows. Huge opening hatch central, and you have opening hatches, one in for your um, ensuite, but both port and starboard. You have, look, two opening hatches here, you have your air conditioning, you have these beautiful port lights. Makes it a very light and airy space to be in. If you're worried about extra space for paper charts, there's a specifically designed shelf that Halberg Grassi have put in here, which I think is absolutely brilliant, in the owner's suite. So you can have all your paper charts laid out, ready to go and stored away. Clever thinking, very very clever thinking. A large hanging locker and your electrical fuses here as you can see. 
really easy to get to. Breakers. There is access to your um, mechanical space here in the owner's cabin. Nice, thick um, soundproofing. We'll just have a quick look. It's your Panda generator, fuel scrubbers forward. Very easy, master vault system. Very, very nice engine compartment. Electronic controls for your air conditioning up here. Okay, port side of your um, queen berth, there's a really nice L-shaped settee, somewhere to lounge out if you want a, a bit of peace and quiet, some time on your own. Obviously, deep storage either side. Television for when you're relaxing in bed or fuse boxes underneath. There's all your breaker switches and a vanity over on the starboard side, which is really nice. Plenty of room, plenty of comfort. And once again, somewhere, you know, you could vanity, I say, but these guys are using it as a office, which I think is really nice and then into the owner's heads. Freshwater electric flush toilet. It's pretty much becoming standard on these better boats. Nice sink with vanity and a single separate shower here. Once again, a washer dryer. So everything you need, a home from home, somewhere very comfortable to go sailing around the world. Let me know what you think. Uh, I love this boat. In January at Dusseldorf, they will be launching the new 69, which we've all been waiting for. Um, if you haven't seen some of the clips for that, head over to the Halberg Rassi uh, website and their YouTube channel and there's some technical bits as they've been going through the build. Hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, thank you for coming along and we'll see you on the next one.